Good morning. We start the work of UCMC and the topic of the first press briefing, human rights activists call the new MPs to return to IDPs the right to vote at local elections. I was because of Tatiana Dugneva, Executive Director of NGO Civil Holding Group of Influence, Darina Tokach, Advocacy Coordinator, Charity Foundation and Right to Protection, Alexandra Kluge, Journalist uh, Civil N Network, Apura and Alexandra Dvoretska, co-founder of Vostok Source Initiative. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attention. Thank you for keeping focus on the issues of electoral rights of IDPs, because this problem was um, uh, important for four years, during four years, and today we're going to speak about our expectations. And we are speaking not about the previous Verkhovna Rada, but we're speaking uh, about the deputies of the ninth convocation, the new Irhovna Rada. So what was going on during the period after elections and uh, what are our expectations and why we need to restore the rights of IDPs concerning elections. I would like to say that during the last two weeks throughout Ukraine in all the regions, we got uh, the photos of IDPs who gathered near local councils with posters. Please show it on the screen. People wrote that everyone has the right to participate in elections and IDPs are also voters and each vote counts. And people believe so and they understand that uh, elections, uh, local elections that, that will happen in all October 2020 should be held uh, with participation of 1,200,000 IDPs and the Ministry of Social Policy published the figure, uh, 1,400,000 IDPs. If we take to uh, 100,000 uh, IDPs who are children, then we will have this figure 1,200,000 of IDPs who have uh, voting rights, but uh, they are not able to vote in the uh, communities uh, where they relocated. And the voters from Crimea and Donetsk, uh, some of them uh, um, appealed to court to, to restore their voting rights, but this issue should not be resolved through the court. It should be resolved to through proper legislation. In 2016, together with our respect, uh, respect colleagues, we developed a draft law uh, 6240. Uh, this is the law on IDPs and other internal migrants. Why we speak about other internal mi migrants? Because when the campaign started, uh, to protect the rights, uh, and uh, this was about labor migrants uh, who live for tens of years in new communities and they do not participate in local elections and they do not elect mayors yeah. and uh, local officials. Uh, so uh, this uh, draft law 6240 envisages a procedure that provides an opportunity to IDPs or other people who live uh, not at the place of the registration, they will be able to implement the right. And uh, Alexander Klyuzhev uh, will tell us more about this topic, and then we will speak uh, with you, and we will speak about why we announced the action that will happen tomorrow at the Supreme Council. and. Uh, uh, we will welcome the deputies and we will remind to them about the rights of IDPs, uh, about their voting rights. And, and uh, what can we do, Alexander, today to resolve this issue? This is a good slogan. Starting 2014, we raised these questions uh, and we would like to speak about social political context. So if we assess the activity of the previous um, parliament uh, concerning this reform, they were not successful. And uh, they adopted the uh, electoral code at the end of the um, cadence and um, also that uh, the uh, violations against uh, uh, 
um, the rights of uh, voters uh, that uh, they uh, should be fought against. So the new parliament uh, should uh, uh, improve the situation and uh, this uh, uh, so uh, this was signed uh, uh, before the new convocation with the uh, violations of uh, uh, the rules uh, concerning uh, the adoption of draft laws. So it is difficult to forecast uh, the fate of this uh, draft law. And uh, uh, the uh, civil society won't change. And, uh, uh, the code ignored some important points signed uh, in the bill that was signed by Andrei Parubi yesterday. So uh, <coughs> we believe that um, uh, this convocation uh, will improve the situation and uh, the uh, reform will be accelerated and we should be more inclusive. Uh, we should uh, not just speak about this issue and uh, the new majority in the parliament uh, should have direct uh, expert dialogue concerning electoral reform. So this draft law 6240, it will be re-registered and this is the draft law that uh, was discussed for several years and uh, the new majority and the new parliament, it will be easier for them to work on it because uh, uh, this l draft law was uh, worked on now and the committees uh, should uh, consider it and we hope that the new majority will demonstrate uh, the readiness to vote for us, uh, speaking uh, for this draft law. Uh, so uh, this is about the change of uh, place of residence, we have state uh, register voters, so uh, now people will be able to change the place of uh, uh, voting and uh, uh, in this way they won't be included twice at different polling stations. And uh, So uh, the citizen may <coughs> appeal to the register and to change this address and uh, of uh, for voting, and this is uh, for the national and local elections. And uh, in this way, we will be able to provide an opportunity to vote to people uh, at the place of the actual residence, uh, uh, place, uh, place of residence, uh, at the place of actual residence. So uh, during national uh, elections, uh, the voters have the right to vote uh, and they can uh, temporarily change uh, um, of place of voting and uh, at local elections we have problem uh, uh, problem of voting for migrants and IDPs they are not able to vote at local elections and our colleagues deal with the issues of protection of voters' rights and IDP's rights, uh, and uh, there are big problems uh, concerning local elections and uh, um, these problems uh, persist and the draft law envisages a number of limitations concerning uh, voting address in order not to have the grounds to change these uh, addresses uh, uh, when, uh, because uh, there is some cases of bribe there are some cases of bribery in elections and also uh, in the, by this draft law, we envisage some preventive measures against violations. And uh, when we liberalize these procedures for IDPs and migrants, we should speak about the parallel track. And APORA, our organization, also proposes this parallel track improvement of criminal and administrative law 
concerning responsibility for crimes against voting rights of citizens and violations of electoral law. And uh, by reinforcing this responsibility by improving criminal code, we will be able to prevent any violations uh, in existing procedures and uh, with these new liberalized procedures. Thank you, Alexander. Good morning. Greetings to everyone. I would like to speak more in the context of political rights of IDPs about the myths and problems on the way of adopting legislative initiatives that should regulate this uh, um, re the implementation of political uh, rights of IDPs and uh, other migrants. Uh, but I would like to speak more about IDPs. Um, one of the arguments against uh, regulation of this issue is that this is about a big number of people who now live in new host communities, mainly in Donetsk and Lugansk oblasts, uh, where the biggest number of IDPs uh, is registered. And before parliamentary and presidential elections, our organization, uh, we held some surveys at checkpoints. We are present there five days a week. We spoke with people who constantly crossed the line of contact uh, at checkpoints, and we asked whether they plan to vote uh, in presidential uh, elections during first and second round and uh, during parliamentary elections. And the statistics show that the majority of people who cross the line regularly and uh, uh, they reside in occupied territories of Donetsk and Lugansk Oblast. They lacked information about implementation of their political rights. Uh, and they didn't plan to exercise their political rights because they do not live constantly in the host communities. Why we face such situation? Why big number of IDPs are registered in the Donetsk and Lugansk Oblast and why these people do not reside there? We were speaking about this, this topic uh, a lot. This is a painful topic painful for politicians and for human rights defenders. And uh, uh, this concerns uh, legal sphere, not political sphere. This is about limitations of constitutional rights of IDPs and people who live in occupied territories in the context of access to pensions. As of today, we face situation in which people, in order to exercise constitutional right to get a pension, they should go to control it the territory to register as IDP, to get the certificate of IDP, and only due to this uh, they will be able to get uh, pensions. And of course, such a situation and such normative map creates a big number, let's say, statistical errors that influence overall picture that influences political decisions. When we speak about official statistics that we have 1,400,000 IDPs and uh, 1 million 200,000 voters who live in host communities and according to logic and spirit of law, they have the right to get opportunity to exercise their voting rights in new communities. So we are speaking about the people who live in the occupied territories and uh, they need to cross contact line constantly in order to get the opportunity to exercise uh, their right for pension. The main priority requirement and condition in order to get adequate picture and to form policy concerning occupied territories and uh, 
to exercise uh, political rights, there should be a mechanism created that would allow IDP and uh, people who reside in occupied territories to get and exercise their constitutional right and to get their pensions without additional requirements. We need to separate pension and other social benefits and rights of IDPs from the certificate of IDP. In this way, by this simple legislative change, we will be able to have an adequate picture about the number of IDPs who live in host communities and the number of people who want to take part in uh, elections. And this initiative was registered, uh, and uh, this is draft law 6692 about payments to people who live in un uncontrolled territories. And we do not want to criticize predecessors, but this initiative stayed in parliament. It didn't reach the whole, it was not considered. And we really hope that among the first steps, together with the 6640, uh, that will be uh, 62, uh, uh, that uh, also the mechanism of paying pension also will be, will be considered. Also, there was an interesting test. Think about the word that uh, begins in R and ends in st. The first uh, word was Rivnist uh, and um, Radist, equality and uh, happiness. And we hope that uh, uh, we will achieve good results in the uh, issue of protection of uh, voting rights of IDPs. And the first word I remember is. Uh, reality. That's why we should speak about reality. Thank you, Darina. Let's speak about IDPs. I can speak about it because I am an IDP from Autonomous Republic of Crimea. And for six years, I have been living in Kiev. But I'm not considered as a member of a wonderful Kievan community. And during these elections, uh, I got one bulletin, not like my neighbors, they got two. I was able to vote only uh, in, through, uh, I, I was only able to vote for the deputy on the, the um, party list, not uh, uh, according to the list of uh, um, the deputies who uh, I elected through single member. Uh, constituency. So the parliament will uh, uh, will represent me only in 229 deputies, so it is not enough to adopt the law. So I feel that this situation is unfair. I live in Kiev. I have a certificate of IDP and the address where you are registered, it, this address is your tax address, and you pay taxes to the community where you live. What happens next? Then these taxes go to education, health care, transport, and other infrastructural issues, roads. And I, as IDP, I live in Kiev, and I use these services. My child goes to kindergarten, then uh, my child will go to school. I will use public transport, uh, underground, and I pay taxes, uh, but I cannot control this money because I cannot influence this. I cannot put the mark against the name of the deputy who will control the use of this money. According to the survey two years ago, 
uh, we uh, have 5050 my uh, international organization on migration provide information that 50% of people wanted to return to the place of their residency now 70% uh, do not plan to return to the um, previous place of residence so a conflict is long six years. People now have new uh, work, new place of residence. They register businesses and they uh, do not believe that uh, Donetsk and Lugansk will be freed soon and they will be able to go back to the place of their residence. Uh, so uh, previously, they spoke about elections in occupied Donbass in accordance with the Minsk agreements and uh, some deputies announced that IDPs should be a voice of uh, Ukrainian Donbass. They uh, went away, fled because of persecution and uh, then they should go back. And now we do not speak about the voice of Donbass and close opportunity to have local elections and people who um, uh, went away. They have little connection to the territory. Once again, I would like to repeat, because of ruined infrastructure and social connections, they uh, do not relate to the community where they lived before. They have more in common with the community they live now. The last thing I wanted to say, uh, during uh, the um, uh, the years uh, we uh, were implemented, uh, we were implementing decentralization reform, and now we have new amalgamated communities, and there are a lot of people who uh, didn't uh, vote before for local officials and. Uh, another configuration will exist and now we will be able to integrate uh, IDPs to the community. Those people who live uh, near you in the same house, they attend the same kindergarten and go to one school, they should be able to uh, vote for those who represent them in local bodies of power. So. I would like to speak about the mechanism. We had draft law 6240 and our deputies were not capable to vote uh, in the first reading, so it will not be directly inherited uh, uh, as those that uh, went through first reading. So we believe that uh, this uh, will have the same content, we will uh, uh, say that people should be able to vote in, during local elections and during national elections and to use the system that exists and uh, also to speak about a broader context about the reform of the place of registration people should not be serfs, they should not be connected to the place of residence, and uh, uh, they should be able to exercise their voting rights despite the stamps in their passports. We face another problem, IDPs and uh, people who reached uh, voting age, they are also limited in exercising their rights because they cannot get this place of registration and uh, the ownership right is in the occupied territory. They are not able to get registered in those territories and uh, at a new place of residence they also are not able to get this registration. That's why uh, we have some uh, promises from new political leaders. Uh, and that they will be able to deal with this topic. And we hope that uh, 
actions will follow and uh, also the issue who will represent IDPs in the new parliament and also in the new government. Uh, we do not know what uh, the uh, relevant ministry will be preserved, the ministry on occupied territories and who will have this ministry in the new configuration of power. I think we won't wait for long. Everything will be clear soon. And uh, that's why we are here today in order to remind that these uh, voters exist, uh, those re citizens who suffered in the result of Russian aggression, but somehow they now suffer because uh, of the system of protection of IDPs that is not uh, properly arranged. So we are speaking about pension, social protection and provision of housing and also about political rights because uh, uh, the right, uh, voting right cannot be provided by person himself. Uh, in other spheres of life, people may contribute. They find housing, they pay taxes, they find employment. But this issue of voting cannot be resolved without uh, a legal basis. And um, Alexandra also brought example from organization uh, International Migration Organization and in May and in June, Kamis uh, uh, carried out a survey of respondents concerning uh, the perception of IDPs and communities. 90% of uh, host communities, residents believe that IDP should have the same political rights as uh, the residents of host communities and they should be able to vote uh, in local elections and also other forms of local democracy as public hearings, local initiatives, uh, participatory budgets. And uh, the residents of host communities, they believe that uh, uh, this should be provided to IDPs uh, that change the communities not only in numbers but also in quality and uh, society gets accustomed to this and uh, now at the legislative level we should restore the voting rights of IDPs. Uh, the number is not important, 6244. Um, hold this campaign uh, under this number and uh, people now uh, um, participate to support this um, initiative in this initiative and uh, show the photo invisible of invisible voter this is the campaign and uh, uh, I do not know whether new deputies know this topic well concerning IDPs, but uh, we should make this issue uh, public and uh, uh, the issue of voting rights of IDPs. I believe that this issue will be resolved soon. Uh, tomorrow, on the first day of the work of the Verkhovna Rada, public activists and IDPs will uh, have a meeting near the public Parliament in order to restore the rights, voting rights of IDPs, and I believe that the new convocation will be able to do this soon because time is lacking. And if local elections will be planned, elections in the autumn 2019, uh, so um, there is no uh, much time uh, to uh, do all this. Uh, that's why we believe in opportunity to carry out uh, quick uh, and efficient changes. I would like to repeat what Alexandra said, I believe that she reminded to us very important aspects of the problems we discussed. The previous convocation of the parliament, they used prospects of resolution of the international armed conflict as a basis for inactivity. This is about social and the political and economic rights and the activity of the state bodies concerning proper policies in the spheres. 
um, first international negotiations, then we will think about uh, resolution of the problems of those who suffered from the conflict, and uh, um, then we will think about uh, the rights of IDPs, and we hope that the new team, they should not use such ag arguments. They should have international negotiations, but we have a lot uh, of other tasks concerning Crimea, Donetsk, Lugansk, uh, occupied territories, and the IDP's uh, issues should be resolved. And we see that uh, at international uh, level, um, uh, we should work, but this should not prevent us from resolving internal issues. And I want that the new teams, they should uh, reject the temptation uh, to uh, do like the previous uh, power. Uh, so um, uh, we uh, should work not only at international level, we should work also inside the country. And uh, uh, if you have questions, uh, please introduce yourself first and uh, ask a question. Maybe some final remarks? If there are no questions, we thank you all for attention. This is the end of press briefing.